What's up everybody and welcome to today's video. In today's video we are talking about physics, which is fun. Everybody likes physics. Um, so last time I talked about the idea of balisong balances, which is part of the equation, but uh, many people commented and they said, well, actually weight distribution has a lot more to do with the way a balisong flips uh, instead of the balance. And that's true. Um, the balance is really just an oversimplification of the actual physics of how a balisong works. So today I have a number of different balisongs out in front of me, and I just wanted to talk about how the physics of balisongs actually works. So the thing about balisongs is that they're actually a very complicated physical system. You see, you're dealing with two different uh, motion points. You've got two different fulcrums going on that are both creating a triple pendulum effect. So you have the blade happening as a pendulum, you have each handle happening as a pendulum, and all of them individually are interacting based off of these two points of rotation. And what that does is it creates a very complicated system. Uh, before I got into balisongs, I actually did a lot of uh, stuff with fixed blade knives. And uh, something to note about fixed blade knives is that you can, you know, juggle them and do all sorts of fun stuff where you're rolling them through your fingers and then like throwing them and juggling them and catching them. But the thing is, a fixed blade knife uh, behaves very differently than a balisong. And that's for a number of reasons, but the main one is this complicated system that creates a lot of complicated interactions. But the thing to note here is that balisongs are kind of hard to figure out. It's hard to uh, estimate how a balisong is going to feel or operate uh, when you, you know, have it and when you're designing it. And so you really won't be able to tell how good of a job you did until you actually pick it up and flip it. And so that's one of the big problems with designing balisongs that makes it difficult is that it's like you can only do so much simulation in the computer before you actually need to pick up the balisong and test it out yourself and actually see how good of a job you did, you know, uh, creating something that flips. My camera decided to point at me again. There we go. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different things happening here, but that's that's kind of the gist of it. Now, something to note about balisongs is that because you've got this complicated system, a, a lot of physics come into play here. And one of the main things that uh, I don't think people know the word for necessarily, but they know the idea of is saying that, well, it's not actually the balance that matters as much, which is the balance being the point at which the balance song balances uh, on an axis. So wherever that balance song balances, that is the, you know, weight distribution. So you have more density in the handles than you do in the blade. And that's why you need on this balance song much more length on this side than on this side, because the blade and stuff is so light compared to how heavy these handles are that the balance point is all the way down here. Whereas on something like the Cracker Rackin, which is much more neutral, the balance point is much higher up. It's much more forward. So you have a lot more handle and a lot more blade kind of matched, and so you get a relatively neutral experience. <laughs> now, the reason that that's not the entire picture has to do with how pendulums work and how things rotate around an axis, okay? Um, the thing that actually affects the flippability of almost any balisong is a concept known as moment of inertia. And moment of inertia is kind of complicated, but essentially it means that a object or a pendulum, um, be it a like round object or something that is a pendulum, the more mass that it has further away from the rotation point, the slower it will move or the more it will resist movement, okay? Or the more force it will take to cause it to move, right? So that has uh, some practical uses. For instance, if you take a, uh, I saw a really good video the other day on moment of inertia, which is if you take two cylinders that are the same density, one of them is a solid cylinder, so the inside of the cylinder is totally solid, and then the other one is a circle with nothing in the middle, and they're both the same weight, they have the same density, but in the one that's a circle, all of its density is concentrated around the circumference, whereas with the one that is, you know, a fully made object, that one's density is throughout the object. 
if you take both of those cylinders and roll them down a hill, the one that is hollow will roll slower than the one that is solid. And the reason for this is because that density is concentrated around the outside of the object instead of being on the inside of the object. And what that does is it takes the weight. So imagine inside of this balisong, there's a weight at the end of the handle. The distance from the center pivot point to that weight and the amount of weight uh, very dramatically affects how quickly this handle wants to swing and also it dramatically affects how much force is required to cause this handle to swing okay and so that's something that's very important to note and the way that that uh, actually displays itself in ballast songs is very interesting and I think it's something that we're going to have to consider more and more as more ballast songs come out that have an adjustable weight system right so let's talk about adjustable weight systems for just a moment when you have an adjustable weight system, the way that that's been solved currently is by utilizing weights in the spacer section. So in the uh, Tsunami here, there are little pins that go inside of this space at the very end of uh, these guys. Inside of the uh, uh, Serif here, you have a large brass weight that's kind of cut into the bottom here. Okay, in both of those systems, you are adjusting the amount of weight that is at the very end of the handle, which does affect the flipping. It affects it substantially. However, it's not in the way you might think. You see, yes, it does what I said in the uh, handle bias video where I talk about how if something is more handle biased, it'll be more likely to carry its momentum uh, across tricks. So when you're doing rollovers and stuff, it makes it easier to do that. And then when you do ricochets and stuff, it makes it more difficult to do that because while they want to keep rotating, they also don't want to stop rotating. So it takes less force to continue the rotation, but it also takes more force to stop the rotation. Okay, now similarly, the uh, Stitch Steel Alien is very small, but it's also handle biased. So why is it easier to flip this thing very quickly than it is to flip this thing, even though this thing is technically, I, I think it weighs substantially less. The difference comes down to size. And so this is where moment of inertia becomes very important because moment of inertia is based off of two principles. One of those principles is the ability of uh, an object to rotate due to the mass and the distance, okay? Or that, that's the explanation of it. So the distance from the rotation point combined with the mass at the end of the handle equals the moment of inertia, okay? And so if you have something that is longer that extra distance is going to affect it more than if it was simply heavier. So the distance actually has a greater effect than the mass itself, okay? So the longer your handles are, the more you're going to have that effect of moment of inertia, the more you're going to feel that uh, resist your, you know, the things you're trying to do, the flipping you're trying to achieve. And so with the Stitch Steel Alien, this thing I'm able to flip very quickly, even though it's a uh, very handle biased knife. And the reason for that is simply because it is shorter. The shortness of these handles means that the moment of inertia of the entire object is substantially less than something much longer than this. And so because it is so short, I'm able to do very quick, very nice tricks, even though the balance is pretty handle biased. And so, as people were saying, the actual weight distribution, which, you know, has a lot to do with the length of the handles and the hole pattern and where you've put the weights, that has a lot to do with how the knife moves because of moment of inertia. And so because this has a low moment of inertia, because these handles are not very long, you're able to flip it pretty quickly. Similarly, with my uh, serif, I am able to go very fast on my serif, but if I try too hard, I'll drop it like that. And that's because the mass is concentrated at the end of these handles, very much so. The difference between titanium and brass in terms of density is very substantial. And so because this has brass weights, 
at the end of each handle, you end up having a system that has a lot of mass concentrated very far from the pivot point. And so that means that it's going to resist that angular momentum a fair bit until it picks it up, and then it's going to resist stopping also. By the way, I'm going to interrupt our physics lessons real quick, because I just noticed there's a Daddy Longlegs. Look at him. Hello, sir. How are you today? Are you having a good day? Hello, Daddy Longlegs. Look at how long his legs are. He is so smart. He's learning about physics, just like you guys. Anyways, yeah, so moment of inertia is incredibly important to balisson construction. And that's why the uh, rise in adjustable weight balisongs is going to cause a lot of problems for the balisong hobby, because we're going to have to learn more about moment of inertia to get over the hump of uh, putting weights in our ba in, into our handles. Because if you're just putting a uh, tungsten weight or a stainless steel weight or whatever into the back of your handle, what you're doing is you're substantially affecting the moment of inertia of each one of your handles, more so than just the balance. You know, obviously you can think, oh yeah, well, if I just make the balance heavier, you know, I'm just making the handle heavier. But really what's happening is you're increasing the moment of inertia because you're taking the mass of the entire handle and substantially pulling it backwards towards the end of the handle, which will cause the handle to resist rotation more than it would had you actually distributed that same mass across the entire length of the handle. So, so, you know, the difference being is that if you have a handle that is made out of uh, stainless steel the entire way versus a handle that is made out of aluminum, but it has a tungsten weight at the end, ironically enough, if the handles are the same size and shape uh, and the same weight, the stainless steel handle will move faster than the aluminum one with the tungsten weight because the one with the tungsten weight at the end, if you can imagine this orange piece being the tungsten weight, that brings all of the mass of the handle because the aluminum doesn't weigh very much all the way to the end. And so that means it's the mass times the length, I believe. Um, that could be wrong. I don't remember exactly the equation, but it's either mass times length or, or divided by, and there's a square in there. Don't, I'm, I'm not a scientist, don't go with me on this, but I'm just saying the general gist is that by taking that much mass and putting it at the end of a handle like that, what you're doing is you're slowing down the ability of this handle to move in the first place. And so the one that has stainless steel handles where the, ba where the mass is more readily distributed across the entire length of the handle, that one's actually going to move faster than the one where you added weights at the end of the aluminum handle. And that that, now we come around full circle, that is the reason that the Krakarakin to this day manages to be one of the best performing balisongs ever created. It's because the entire mass of the handle is actually relatively regular. You see, me and Brandon were talking very extensively, I don't have a Prisma here with me, but we were talking about the difference between the Prisma and the Krakarakin, and why we believe that the Prisma doesn't flip as good as the Krakarakin. And after a a lot of talking and a lot of discussion, what we realized is that the Prisma's handles are longer than the Karakarakin's handles by a fair bit, and so is the blade. So the overall length of the knife is very large. And then on top of that, you have these handles that are made of aluminum that are very light, and then right at the end of the handle, you have a weight that is made of stainless steel, which is much more dense than aluminum. And so what you've done is you've increased the moment of inertia substantially by lengthening the handle and adding a weight at the end. And so compared to the Krakarakin, that thing flips differently in a way that we couldn't really figure out why until I looked into the science behind it and I realized that the moment of inertia has increased so much that it likes to resist doing changeovers on certain tricks. So when you're doing stuff like this on a behind the eight ball where you're kind of changing the momentum from the underhand to overhand, hand, it likes to kind of resist that change in momentum, and it's because of its moment of inertia on each handle. And so that was a very interesting discovery. The reason the Krakarakin flips so well is because it is 
aluminum the entire way and it's been very very uh a lot of thought was put in to the design of this aluminum to maintain a relatively consistent uh, amount of mass across the entire handle you know obviously you do have a weight at the bottom of the handle but it is much more distributed across the entire mass of the handle in uh unlike the prisma where it has a much more so in the prisma you have three relatively deep cutouts that go down the handle and those remove a substantial amount of mass and then you have a cutout that's about the same uh, depth and size as this for the channel but at the end the uh, Prisma channel actually extends even further than I believe it needs to so compared to this it actually extends substantially further down and then you have a stainless steel weight at the end and so what that does is that creates a lot of bias that I think is unnecessary and it causes problems for the uh, flippability of that balisong. Whereas with the Krakarakin, because it is so neutral, yes, that's a very good flipper. But what's really good about it being, a, or what really makes it a good flipper is the fact that there isn't a high concentration of mass at the end of the handle. Instead, the mass is distributed properly across the entire length of the handle. And so the moment of inertia of each handle is relatively low. And that is a combination of both the length of the handles and the mass at the end of the handles. So yeah. Okay. I hope you guys liked that science lesson because that was a lot of information to go through. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea how long this video was. So like, sorry if it's really, really, really long, but like science is cool, I think. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, that is a quick explanation. Wow, I said quick. That isn't. That was not quick, but yeah, that was an explanation <laughs> of uh, the physics of balisongs and what kind of affects their flippability and the uh, very interesting concept, in my opinion, of moment of inertia. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed my little spiel and uh, I'll see y'all later. Peace.